Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today it's time for the third and final installment of the Female Perspectives on Prepping series. This is going to be a good one, so stay tuned. All right, so before we start, I just want to thank my guests for participating in this series. It's been a great learning experience for myself and I'm sure many others as well. And I got to post a disclaimer that obviously you're not going to agree with everything that these women have to say about prepping and survival. And of course, I'm not going to agree with everything they have to say either. You know, I think it's easy to read too deep in terms of a lot of what these participants are saying, in terms of, you know, what their ideologies are. Some of them have been accused of being feministic and all of that. And I mean, the fact is that they're speaking from a female perspective. And you got to keep in mind, too, that there's not a whole lot of female preppers and survivalists out there. And as I've said before, in order to be a prepper or consider yourself even remotely close to that, you have to be somewhat independently minded and mentally strong. So obviously you're going to perhaps differ from the stereotypical female in a lot of ways is that you're going to pride yourself on self-reliance and independence. That may take the form of what appears to be liberal feminist views. That said, you know what, that's that person's right to entertain those views. I'm here to listen and in order to do an actual qualitative case study of female preppers, we have to be open to whatever it is they have to say, because you're not going to change anybody's opinion. So you're not going to agree with everything they say. I'm definitely not going to agree with everything they have to say, but I'm going to open my ear to it. I'm going to listen to it as non-judgmentally as possible. And then I'm going to try to integrate what I can into my worldview. And you know what? I take the best and I leave the rest. All right, so without further ado, let's get to the questions. What motivates you to prepare? What motivates me to prep is, you know, my will to survive and wanting to take care of my children. You know, after looking at stuff like Hurricane Katrina, and saw, seeing what happened and seeing how the government was not readily able to help the citizens of New Orleans, that just makes me want to prep and be prepared to, you know, if I can't get the sources that I need from family members or if the government can't come in and stuff and save us, I want to be able to save myself and mainly take care of my children. So what really motivates me to prep is just the fact that I want to be comfortable. I want to know that if anything happens, no matter what it is, big or small or every day or whatever, I am prepared to handle it. I can say, yes, I have that extra food to hold us over during that lost job. Or yes, we have this extra water to get us through, um, you know, like a, a Flint, Michigan type situation. Yes, we have these extra preps that can get us through any type of natural disaster or emergency or whatever and we're just comfortable we are comfortable in our own skin in our own preps and everything that we'll be able to make it work no matter what i'm motivated by love for my family i call it just in case prepping so i never have to say if only i would have but I'm also motivated larger. I want to encourage as many people as possible to prep and be prepared. And that's the reason I have my channel. And lately on my channel, I've been a little bit more into kit building because I really enjoy that. It's kind of, for me, it's kind of the hobby side of prepping. But I will be making some prepping basic videos coming up especially be valuable for newbie preppers. My original and returning back to motivation for prepping is health. I feel like the world is falling prey to big conglomerate Monsanto that is telling us how we're going to eat our food. And I don't like somebody else to be in charge of my food. I don't like somebody else to be in charge of my health. I want to make those choices and have it be a freedom rather than something where, say if I was on food stamps, or on chip or something like that. 
that they said, well, because you're on chip, you have to get your kids immunized or because you're on food stamps, you have to do this. I, I don't like that feeling of somebody being able to dictate what I do, especially in my own home. Family. I never want to have to look at my children and say that I can't feed you or I can't shelter or protect you. Family is my primary motivator. My husband and I's main motivation for making sure there's provisions in our home is our children. We feel that we're raising our kids in such a way that we're putting um, knowledge and we're putting um, love and wisdom in them that we want to see them survive. We want to see them thrive and we want to bring up this legacy in hopes that their generation, their tomorrow would be better. Back in 2005, I watched Hurricane Katrina and I watched what three days without food and water did to people, how things just fell apart and people were suffering and they were panicking and the violence that erupted and the chaos and the destruction of personal property. And that really woke my brain up to the vulnerability that we had because this was one disaster in an entire nation and all the resources of federal and state governments were available to help with Katrina and it was still a catastrophe. So that got my brain thinking, oh my goodness, we are very vulnerable. In 2011, there was Hurricane Sandy and seeing a hurricane hit New York and seeing New York subways flooded and seeing the amount of flooding that happened was just shocking for me. Again, my brain just kind of woke up. And we have seen in the last 15 years more frequent and more intense storms. We've got these atmospheric rivers that are wider, that carry more water, that are moving more slowly. So you have these torrential downpours because the storms aren't moving as fast where you're getting you know, 14 inches of rain in 24 hours. Like we're seeing that, we're seeing the polar vortex, all kinds of weird things are happening with our weather and that's very much related to global warming. And that's not going away. Right? Our challenges are only going to increase when it comes to that. And then in 2008, just a few bankers in the United States sent the economies throughout the world topsy-turvy. That for me was stunning. And I was really mad. I was thinking, why is it that just a few idiots, such a few self-absorbed psychopaths can have such an enormous effect? And then what happens with the United States economy, which is, we all know, right, it's bankrupt. What happens when they can't do their magic and things fall apart, not just with the bankers? So a fragile, globally interdependent economy really, really makes me want to prepare. And I just think that the challenges that are facing us, you know, any one of them would be severe, but you put them all together and we are facing um, a lot of potential devastation, a lot of potential situations of harm. And I really feel, not just as a nurse, because as a nurse, my, I'm hardwired to be thinking about decreasing suffering and extending life, but also as a human being, I feel like we have a moral responsibility to warn others because if we see something that's coming down the pipe, as a human being, I feel a responsibility to tell anyone who will listen, look, this is what's coming, here are some things that you can do to prepare. And I feel really strongly about that. And of course, there are the people that in my life, my family members and my friends that I really care about but I'm feeling getting on YouTube. I'm doing it on YouTube because I can do this without going on YouTube with my family and friends. I'm doing this on YouTube because the scope is so huge. And I feel like the media is just, they're getting better, but there's a lot of silence about this. And there are a lot of people who really don't have a clue of what could potentially be coming our way. Are you open about preparedness with your female friends? I don't tend to hang out with people that aren't preppers. I feel like they endanger my family if they're not preppers. Or maybe endanger is, is too strong of a word. If you're not a prepper, I don't really want you in my home seeing what I have because I want to know that you are preparing in your own home and that any friendship and alliance that we have together will be mutually beneficial rather than a drain on my family. So when I find that people are not um, it's not a, a back and forth exchange and you don't have skills, but I have all, the, all these skills. I have a hard time feeling like it's beneficial because any time that I invest into the friendship, um, 
isn't coming back by me also learning from you in return. I love that exchange of thought, exchange of education and ideas and goods. I have lots of friends that we go in on livestock together and help each other that way and it's it's been mutually beneficial and that's been a good thing. I actually am only open about preparedness with one person, my best friend, because she's known me since I was 12 years old and she's always known that I've been <laughs> what she says crazy but you know my best friend I, I trust her but I'm not open with all my female friends because I feel as if you know they would my they would possibly say that I'm crazy and end up not prepping and if something happens they might show up to my house and try to take my preps well with my best friend I'm not too worried about that because she's more than welcome even if she doesn't prepare she's more than welcome to come over my house Initially, when I began prepping, I was kind of like, hush, hush, shh, don't want anybody to know I'm a prepper. Could be kind of embarrassing. But then I started a YouTube channel, and I realized I wanted to be an ambassador for prepping. I wanted to encourage others to prep, and you can't stay in the shadows if you want to do that. So yes, my female friends know that I'm a prepper, and no. I don't think any of them have been encouraged to prep. So I guess I haven't had much of an effect on that. However, uh, at work, I think I've made a difference. Uh, my female business partner is now storing water and recently bought emergency food ration bars and is storing pet food. And one of the young mothers at work got interested in gardening and then she learned how to water bath can and now she has an EDC bag for her car. So I think gradually I made a little difference in the lives uh, of some people, but I'm hoping my channel encourages more people down the road of Prepperdom. Um, I'm gonna continue, I won't be in the shadows. Yes, I am a prepper and I am proud of it. Yes and no. <laughs> um, I don't try to keep it a secret. I will talk to anybody about preparedness, but I'm also not very good at self-promotion. So um, my whole online presence began by trying to help a friend who wanted to become more prepared. I am more than willing to talk with, with any of my female friends about preparedness. A lot of them, I don't know if they don't want to or it's just something that they don't think about on a regular basis. Um, but if it, if it doesn't come up, I don't go pushing it on people. Uh, I have a lot of friends and acquaintances who have no idea that I have a YouTube channel or a website or a whole book about preparedness and food storage. So yes and no. Yeah, I'm willing to. No, I don't do a very good job at it. Honestly, I'm not open to preparedness with any of my friends, whether female or male, but I have noticed a lot more pushback with my female friends or female co-workers or things like when I just mention something usually they'll talk about something first and I'll be like well it's good to be prepared you know and then they'll start laughing and I feel like females do have a I think they are more disbelieving I think females do take a lot more convincing when it comes to getting prepared so um, I do get a lot more pushback from females than I do males for sure so I'm not open about my preparedness really to anyone. Yes as a nurse it's really easy because nursing is very much about saving lives, extending lives, improving the quality of lives. It's about preventing illness and disease in the future so preparedness just fits right into my brain as a nurse. It's just a really easy thing. It's part of what we do as nurses. In fact, where I work, we have a program devoted to emergency preparedness. And I've been able to have curriculum, emergency preparedness curriculum. I actually call it emergency preparedness as part of what I do with pregnant and parenting women and pregnant and parenting youth. So it, as a nurse, it's really easy. In terms of my faith community, it's also been easy because the community that I belong to really stresses emergency preparedness and has done so for over a hundred years. So that's a really easy thing. And in terms of people that I just know in my community and my family, I can talk about it in terms of global warming. That's an easy thing for me to talk to my family members about. Or let's talk about solar flares. Do you know what a solar flare is? Do you know what would happen if we had a Carrington event? So depending on the person, you, you can 
really just have a conversation around causes. Right? So if you start with rational discussions about causes, then you it naturally leads to solutions. And um, so I've been really lucky that way. What, if any, global disaster do you see as most likely in the coming years? I think we're already in the, in the middle of a global disaster. I think we are too dependent on the dollar. We are too dependent on food that comes from 500 miles away. And we are already in the middle of it. We are not a self-reliant, self-made people anymore. And I think that that's why so many men are preppers is because they're seeing their dollar not going as far and it's starting to get scary. I think we're already in the middle of it. People don't have skills anymore. People don't know how to do anything anymore. And seeing that dollar drop is really scary for people who have kids to feed that don't know how to make bone broth. Me, I think it would be being hit by a global pandemic. Um, I read somewhere that the majority of epidemiologists think that within the next 50 years, we will be hit by a global pandemic. And I think that is extremely scary. Now, I wasn't worried that much about uh, Ebola hitting North America when that whole scare um, came up because I'm worried more about something that is airborne. If you think of something that is lethal but can be spread like a cold, how horrendous that would be. I mean, already it seems like at work, if one person gets a cold, another three get a cold and so on. That is a true epidemic of horror proportions if it wouldn't be a cold and it would be a lethal influenza instead. Now, I also think the other part that is very worrisome is that we are all very dependent on our healthcare system, you know, our hospitals and our physicians. But what would happen if our hospitals were full or our healthcare workers were too sick to take care of people, what would we do? Most of us do not know basic quarantine procedures, how to sterilize things, how to um, hydrate uh, a victim, all the things that we would need to know if we had to take care of somebody at home. So the whole idea of a global pandemic is extremely scary to me. Now, Something else I would say would be if something happened to our power grid, you know, there's been a lot in the media about that, either by uh, maybe hacking into the power grid software or by a huge EMP. And one of the studies said that within a year, 90% of Americans would be dead if power wasn't restored. So that is pretty darn scary. Now in the case of a global pandemic, I think just as many preppers as non-preppers would probably die. However, in the case of a year-long power loss, preppers might have a little bit of edge if they have looked at alternative energy, storing food, water, etc. But to be honest, my channel is more centered on everyday prepping and not so much on the global apocalyptic type events. As far as global disasters, I see possible economic collapse. I'm not too worried about World War III. That's like the least of my concerns. Um, I'm more concerned about economic collapse and the scarcity of food, like what is going on in Venezuela and what happened in Argentina a while back. And I'm also concerned about climate changes. Um, where I live at, it'll be 80 degrees one day and then it'll be 30 degrees the next and then, oh, I'm sorry, 80 degrees during the daytime and the next day it'll be 30 degrees in the middle of the night and 50 degrees during the day. Um, we'll have, our weather has just changed a lot, but mainly I'm concerned for natural disasters like floods, hurricanes, and economic collapse. Honestly, I really don't like to speculate on what type of global disaster could possibly happen in the coming years. I mean, our earth is ever changing and, you know, people are ever changing. I mean, we have enemies all over the place and, you know, everybody has enemies, um, not just the U.S., not just, you know, whoever, but, you know, there are enemies everywhere. There are people who want to do other people harm all, all over the place. Um, and then our earth is changing, you know, our... Um, 
there's impending dooms of volcanoes and massive earthquakes and things like that. And of course, there are always, you know, uh, hurricanes and massive tornadoes and things like that that can still happen at any time. And um, they could be much larger than we anticipate. And it's just, um, I don't like to speculate on that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, really just be prepared for any type of global disaster that may come. Okay, for me, in my opinion, um, financial crisis is a huge uh, possibility. That really is, in, in my thinking, the most likely. There's plenty of other possibilities and worrying about what could happen is usually falls on my husband in our family. He's really, really good at it. And I, we like to prepare for whatever may come. And so it's good to think about what are possible scenarios, especially local to you. I mean, this did ask about a global disaster, um, but you wanna think about your local disasters too as you're putting your preparedness plans together. I spend a lot more time though thinking about and working on what I can do in my own little piece of the world. So for my family, for my neighborhood, for my town, what can I do to be better prepared in those areas. Um, yeah, really the worrying about stuff is, is, my husband's really good at that. He covers it for both of us. I am most concerned about global warming related weather disasters. Things like snowpocalypses where you have these massive amounts of snow deposited in a really short period of time that can cause roofs to collapse, that basically shut down cities and communities where you're stuck for days if not weeks shoveling out and the power goes down in sub-zero temperatures, those kinds of disasters. Or massive flooding where you see destruction of crops and uh, animals and property, huge, huge hit to economies, uh, punctuated with long periods of drought which can lead to wildfires. Like I think that really is going to be a huge concern for us. It's not going to be like one in 100 year storm or one in a thousand year storm. The last 15 years, if you look at severe weather related events, we've had a huge increase in both the number and the severity. And I would say after that, I'm very concerned about solar flares because there is a, in any decade, a 12% chance, a one in eight chance of having a solar flare event that is as strong as the 1859 Carrington event and it would be an event so strong that it would knock out our electricity, knock out our transformers for possibly up to 10 years in the worst case scenario because these things take months to make to get replaced. And we have not been serious about protecting our grids from those kind of storms. And literally, it doesn't have to be just one solar flare. What they've found is that it can be two or three right after each other and it, then it's like you've gone bowling. The first solar flare kind of gets rid of some of the the balls and then the second one can sweep through even more. So we're just starting to learn about sol solar flares and we are due for a big one. You know, I, d I try not to sit around and ponder global disasters. Uh, I know that bad things happen, they have happened, they are happening and more than likely they will happen. And we are so focused on trying to live and pursue a life of sustainability that if something super bad happened, we did our best to prepare for that. But sitting around and thinking about it, I, I really couldn't tell you exactly what I think might happen or might not happen because I just don't spend that much time thinking about that. I got three kids that I'm homeschooling. I've got too much happening. Is there anything you generally dislike about prepper culture? I think the main thing that I dislike about the prepper culture is that it's directed towards they don't really give you any advice or in regards to like, what do you do if there's a scarcity of money? Like the majority of these people out here are prepping. They always talk about, you know, go get you this and go get you that. But some people don't have money like that. I really feel like in the prepper community, they should focus on telling people what they should, how to best manage their money to get the preps that they need and also focusing on people who don't have any money and what they can do to prepare. Cause it's just like all these people who are making these prepping videos, they obviously have jobs and they obviously have money, but I feel like they need to, you know, focus more on people who don't really have the necessary money and how to best help them and assist them. The main thing that I just like about the prepper culture on YouTube 
is how some preppers really, really judge you harshly. And they judge you based on their own preps. They judge you based on what they feel is right. And there are times when I may disagree with somebody about having a certain item or something, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? If that item works for them or if that skill works for them, fantastic. It's not gonna work out for me, but whatever. But what I really, really noticed in the YouTube community is that people will come on to a channel, see something that they don't like, like they see you doing, you know, making a fire a different way than they make a fire and heaven forbid. And uh, so it can get a little judgy. Um, as much as the prepper community on YouTube is awesome, they can also be very judgmental very quickly, especially without knowing anything about you. I do have some pet peeves, um, three of them in fact. The first one is prepper name calling. We often hear a prepper calling a non-prepper a sheeple, and that might make the prepper feel superior to the other person, but in reality, I think that shuts people out, and we don't want to alienate people from embracing prepperdom, so stop calling people names. And number two would be the undue emphasis on mega, mega events. You know, like the Yellowstone super volcano exploding and destroying most of Earth, uh, or maybe a very large EMP, or even aliens, who knows? Not saying that any of these events couldn't happen, but it really then overshadows what most people should be doing, which is prepping for everyday events and disastrous weather and everybody's got to start there I mean, if you think of those mega events you might think well who cares I won't survive anyway why should I do anything why should I prepare so I would like to see a little bit more talk about everyday prepping and number three is emphasis so much on guns and gear for prepping and believe me I like guns just as much as the next person. I mean, it's fun going target shooting. But, and oh, I also like buying gear. And if you saw my Amazon account, you'd know what I mean. But in reality, a lot of prepping is not so sexy. It's more mundane and some of it is skills and knowledge. And I think everybody has to make sure that those basics are done and that we encourage that. And, because otherwise people can kind of get off the prepping path, um, maybe just into guns or, or just accumulating a lot and a lot of gear. So none of that gear is very valuable if you don't have the skills and knowledge to go with it. It's the cattiness, the, um, the lack of helping and sharing and instead being hermits and not coming out to help each other and to instruct each other and to just be friends and be people and instead to allow religion and politics and sex, you know, whether you're male or female, be something that deters you from forming community on YouTube. Uh, if there is, it's really not so much within the prepper culture as how the prepper culture is perceived. So stereotypes around the word prepper. Uh, the Preppers that I know are some of the most decent and thoughtful and motivated people that I know. Not at all the crazy prepper types that are portrayed in the media. So I know there's some of those guys out there, but for the most part, uh, we're good, decent people. And so it's more to me, my, my issue with the prepper culture would be more with how we're portrayed than, than what goes on within the culture itself two things. I would love if like preppers like brought it down a notch, you know, relax, fart in your videos, laugh a little bit, tell some jokes, uh, present your information because there's so much good information out there. Present it maybe a little bit more lighthearted and not so serious. And with that said, it would be great if there is someone out there that uh, had really good survivalist skills but was also good at connecting and speaking to young people so that they could help teach kids how to have survivalist school um, skills. We talk so much about protecting and taking care of our kids, 
um, if we start teaching them from now, small kids can actually be an asset to their families. Well, I think because the, the need to protect and defend is so strong in men, and it's also something that women are concerned about as well, that we very naturally spend a lot of time there and it can be almost intoxicating to learn more and get more gear and develop more skills in protecting and defending those you care about. So it's good, it's good, but I think because we naturally go there because it feels so good to get prepared that way that we neglect other areas. And I think your channel, Game Prepper, does a fantastic job at looking at psychologically what do we need to be preparing for because if your brain is not in full gear, if it's not working well, if this body of yours is not healthy, then your ability to protect and defend yourself is totally screwed. And your ability to meet your needs in all the other areas are affected as well. So I think that's probably what concerns me the most is that one area gets so much attention and these other areas are neglected. And I think the other thing that I dislike is the unwillingness to call a spade a spade. The unwillingness to say it's more than just the economy that is a risk for us right now. Right? We, have, we have a world that's warming. We're going to have more frequent, more intense, more severe storms, whether it's snowstorms, rainstorms, ice storms. We're going to have more droughts. We're going to have more floods. We're going to have more fires. We're going to have more destruction of property. We're going to have more demands on personal resources and on governmental resources. So I think sometimes we've got this mindset that we're preparing for this really narrow event that might happen. And what I'm saying to you guys is that there are many things that can happen. There are many factors that are going on right now. And they're happening now. The last 15 years is a wake up call for us. So I think we have to get more honest about the challenges that we're facing in order for us to really be prepared in all areas. Is there anything you dislike about prepper culture on YouTube in particular? I don't like about the prepper culture the fear that we are going to prepare for this big cataclysm and it's going to drain us on our resources for today. Anything that is in my home, I have to use it on a daily basis. I do not own any prepper stuff that is meant just for future use. Everything that I have has to be used daily or it's not worth having in my home. And so if I can't use it, I need to find a way to use it. And if I can't find a way to use it, I get rid of it. I, life is too short to just dream about big, scary things in the future. You need to live in the now. And don't let your home be overrun by, by these feelings of fear. I think the thing that I dislike is the lack of diversity. And not just black white diversity, but possibly seeing Asians and other cultures and people step out and speaking about it. You know, so people won't think that prepper culture is just white male and conservative. That, you know, you can be a Democrat or an independent or a black man or a white man or a black female um, that is into prepper culture for any kind of reason. What I dislike about the prepper culture in general is there's a lot of fear mongering. There is so much fear mongering, it can get exhausting. There's a lot of people who believe in so many different conspiracies. And I'm all one for, you know, getting knowledge and getting educated and knowing and understanding what's going on around me and listening to the news and knowing again and understanding what's going on around me. But I'm not interested in nitpicking little things just to bring out some conspiracy that was probably never there to begin with. And I mean, I don't know, maybe it was there to begin with. I, I have a very easy time ignoring stuff and knowing what is true and not. Um, I think that the biggest problem is fear mongering. Uh, people taking something, blowing something out of proportion and um, you know, making it a fear monger situation with the public. You know, I have been very, very lucky. Um, I mean, I got into this all probably by watching Cat's Cradle maybe Bear Prepper and of course the Urban Prepper and GQ Prepper and I just had a wonderful, wonderful experience with YouTube Prepper Dub. But I'm lucky. I'm also 
get great comments on my channel. People are very, very nice, but maybe it's because I'm older and people don't want to insult their grandma. I'm not sure. But on some channels, um, I see people leave such rude, rude comments and then there gets to be this infighting, kind of like high school drama. And I really do not enjoy that. Um, the other thing I don't enjoy is sometimes people who produce a video or those who watch the video and comment are so close-minded and won't open their mind to another train of thought and at least have a civil discourse. Um, I really think that is needed instead of going into inflammatory remarks and bickering back and forth. On my channel, I don't have any problem at all. Um, people are respectful and it's, it's actually been a really good experience for me besides people asking me to marry them and I'm already married okay so it's, it's totally cool that's sweet of you but I really am already married to be honest though even though I have a YouTube channel I don't spend a lot of time on YouTube and so I don't I don't know that I'm really qualified to answer any more than what I've answered right there well, I want to say, first of all, what I really like, and I really like how the Prepper community on YouTube has covered security and defense and protection. They've done an amazing job with that. And I also think that homesteading skills, those are really well covered. How to grow food and preserve food, how to dehydrate food, how to <clears throat> take care of animals. Those skills, there's lots of information out there. I think that for so long it wasn't safe to say that you are a prepper, that we've stayed in this mindset where we don't tell very many people, when in reality, the last 15 years, all these weather-related disasters have made it so if you're not preparing, you're kind of crazy, right? Just seeing what's gone on in Houston this past couple of weeks, all the flooding. There was one week where there was 900 people rescued, right? The, the snowpocalypse this past year, the polar vortex, like there's been so many things, the wildfires out west. So it's gone to the point now where you're kind of crazy if you don't prepare. So I think we have to realize that it's no longer a bad thing to talk about emergency preparedness. It just makes you smart. So I wish we would do more of that. I wish we'd say, yes, we're gonna prepare as individuals and as families, but let's talk about communities because that is what is going to give us the real resilience. That's what's going to give us the sense that we can make it through, you know, the worst case scenarios. So that kind of drives me crazy. I kind of wish that in prepper culture, we would see more preppers investing in their community as opposed to trying to figure out how their community is going to fall. You know, well, how is my community going to blow up? Uh, and that might be easy for me to say because I live in a small town and it's and it's easy for me to invest in the people because I see them every day. If you live in a larger town or in a, in a big city, that might be hard. But I, I'd like to see more preppers teaching and encouraging other people to do what they're doing. All right, so I want to thank once again all the ladies who participated in these interviews. Hopefully at some point in the future we can do this again. Maybe if I get enough uh, feedback in the comments section and questions. I know some people have asked questions that I've yet to ask the Council of Seven yet. And you know, it'd be nice to maybe do this again sometime. It is a little tricky to coordinate, but we'll see what we can do down the road. Don't forget to subscribe to their channels if you like the content. And by all means, stay tuned for, we got a lot more stuff coming on this channel. Obviously, there's another After the Collapse installment, which is going to be dealing with this very subject matter that I think a lot of you will be interested in checking out. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the channel. Canadian Prepper out. Check out the Canadian Preppers Network blog, an excellent resource for survivalists and preppers.